Hello friends, Jennifer Pearson here at the Soul Gypsy with the Paulina Tarot. Kind of shaky, look at that. Wonder what that's about. Anyway, um, yes, Paulina Tarot. I'm not gonna do a walkthrough of this because I think there's a lot of this out there. People have seen it. Um so I got this in a trade, I wasn't looking for the Paulina Tarot. I've been mildly curious at times whether or not I would get along with it. <laughs> and that's sometimes what happens with me with trades. It's like, well, what the heck? You know, I don't know if I'll get along with it or not. But, and it might not be an easy one to find a new home for because there's a lot of them out there. But um, I thought I would just give it a try. I will say, so these are the backs, um, that it, uh, it's actually, to me, it's more attractive in person than it is um, in walkthroughs that you see um, online. And I haven't, I wasn't sure why that was, if the colors just are more saturated in person um, or what. I will say that what I'm going to do here is a deck interview because after looking through it, I'm like, hmm, I'm not sure what purpose this deck is going to have uh, in my life. I'm not going to say that it doesn't at this point, but I'm there's a question mark. Of course, there was a question mark even when I agreed to, to do the trade, but... Um, one of the things that appeals to me about it is it, to me, some people I think have said that it's Tim Burton-esque. To me, it's Edward Lear-esque, like um, the artwork of Edward Lear, the person who was the limerick, the limerick writer, um, and other silly forms of poetry. Um, so that that's appealing to me. Um, as I was shuffling it, it's got some pretty stiff card stock for me. Uh, it's like I feel like I need to give it to a compulsive shuffler for a few months and then have it return to me more broken in. Uh, it's not very bendy. The guidebook actually does have kind of their, you know, her own take on things. Um, descriptions of the cards and stuff and so I think uh, I might just read the guidebook to see kind of what her thinking is about the images that she's supplied and it's interesting that she's actually not too far from me if she's still living <laughs> where she was when she, the, the guidebook was written which I, I'm pretty sure was uh, many years ago but um, it's said in there that she was currently living in Chattanooga Tennessee and I'm in Alabama so that was curious, curious fact. What is that? Uh, I don't know what that is. It's a chip from a little box. Um, so what I'm going to do is my deck interview spread. So the first one is what are you here to teach people? <laughs> to take a title. I can't believe that I didn't think to take the title cards out. Well, we'll see if the next one is also a title card. Um, what are you here to teach people? <laughs> that is a title card. He's here to teach, and this actually could be for real. You know, that, not that that's necessarily true of this deck, but sometimes I think, and I'm not going to blame, you know, I'm not going to quote unquote blame people for this, that part of the reason that the deck gets created is as an expression of someone's art. In other words, I've made this deck so people can see this side of me. But we're gonna um, we're gonna say, Jennifer, that that's your fault, um, and move on. That, that <laughs> strange shuffling uh, error and forgetting to take out the two title cards and information cards. So. One more time. What are you here to teach people? Seven of Cups. So 
This is what people get overwhelmed by the details here. I'm trying not to. I think the three birds there. She has these strange, swanny, goosey sorts of birds <laughs> in a lot of her um, art that's in this deck. So, Seven of Cups. And uh, she's got kind of all that cloudy stuff all around her. Two cups behind her with little roses in it. And five cups in front of her with various little sprigs of uh, looks like little wildflowers or something. And the elaborate headdress. And so what I'm getting out of this is imagination, to imagine. And it's interesting because I did a reading earlier today, um, which I will also post, um, and Seven of Cups uh, popped for me. So it's a Seven of Cups day. So interesting there. And this I can easily see as being imagination. Um, and simplification to some extent, you know, she's turning her back on two cups and letting them go in order to um, focus on five and potentially even winnow a few more out. So it still ends up being a, a card about choices. Um, how would you describe yourself? The Ten of Cups. So it sees itself as a happy deck, a happy deck, an inclusive deck. There's a bunch of birds up there that you can't see. Now you can see them. Again, the, the details are a little easier to see in, uh, in person. But a happy deck. Um, you know, this, there's less the happy family, although you have the tree, which implies the family tree. Um, as, you know, romantic love, um, even a, a larger love of our fellow creatures, you know, you might call it a ecological love, something like that going on here. Um, and when I saw that, I thought, well, I don't think of it as a romantic love deck. But, I mean, I could look at it that way and see if it works. But anyway, um, what is your opinion of me? So what is the deck's opinion of me? The Page of Swords. I'm telling you. Sometimes I get the, um, is that a cup down there? Oops. Oh, come on. Yeah, it looks like there's a cup and a snake with a little bat creature. Maybe there's an egg in a nest, maybe? And it looks like he's standing on a drum. There's another little dragony creature. So maybe uh, dancing to the beat of your own drum. Um, but this, this character here, and there's, again, lots of clouds in the sky. It's a bit of a sinister look, so it kind of falls in the... Um, I just don't quite hold with this interpretation, except when somebody looks like that. Um, many people will interpret the uh, Page of Swords as a spy. Um, I, I think the Page of Swords lacks the subtlety of a spy. But, um, but I do get, like, when I pull reading, you know, pull cards around what kind of reader I am, I usually get Knight of Swords, which is uh, a fairly extreme card to get for that sort of thing. I haven't quite figured out what it is. It could be saying I'm a fast reader, but I don't feel like that's true either. Um, but I can see that this makes some sense, considering how I introduced this deck as a maybe deck. My, my sword is up. It arrived with my sword up. <laughs> Where, you know, like, you know, and, and kind of an intellectual approach, you know, is it going to work? Isn't it going to work? Um, 
I'm ready to have an argument with myself and or the deck about whether or not it will work. Um, so I would say that in this situation, that's fairly accurate. I will give it that. Um, how can I best uh, collaborate with you? The Nine of Pentacles. So this is interesting because I am living at the moment a kind of a Nine of Pentacles life. Probably not as contented as uh, what is shown, nor as secure as what is shown as in the Nine of Pentacles. But um, but you know I'm I'm doing all right, and I am a single woman. Um, So this could end up being like the, and I actually was thinking about that a little bit as I was looking through it, um, the Tarot of the Cat People, where in one of my reviews I said, you know, there's, it, there's almost all of the cards have people, if not, I think all of the cards in that deck, Tarot of the Cat People, has people in it, and most of them are on their own, and so that was, there's something about that deck um, that struck me as being for single people. And I began to wonder about that with this deck as I was going through it the first time. So maybe so. I don't know. So um, the fact that it's pentacles, you know, it could be... Um, I could see this even being creative energy, actually, when I think about it, is, is actually, I don't know how this deck would do that, <laughs> collaborate with creating something, um, unless I were to take these images and not use them as a deck, but use them as something else. And you know, I could see that if I don't get along with this deck, I could easily see whether I'm creating something. I wasn't really thinking that, creating something else with it. But you know, when I send a letter to friends, which doesn't happen really often these days, I usually shoot them an email. But, you know, heck, I could easily see um, just putting one of these cards in as a gift. So I could see that as a way of using this deck if I decide not to use it for readings. Um, I often too end up, uh, or recently I'll say, have ended up with a bunch of decks that, you know, they, they maybe, I think two of them had flaws. In other words, they had damaged cards. And so what I did instead of trying to trade them with that damage, um, was I cut them down, I cut them down into bookmarks. And I could see doing that with this deck also. So I now have a bunch of tarot-themed <laughs> bookmarks. Um, and come to think of it, I should have put some in with, uh, with the trade that I made. I might as well have. I've got more, well, no, I don't. <laughs> I was going to say... I have more bookmarks than I have books, but that would be inaccurate. Um, but I've got a, I've got a lot of them, and, and I could easily share them. So, um, what are your strengths as a deck? The Two of Cups. So here it is again, saying that it's like a love deck. So very interesting. I guess uh, I'm going to have to explore that a little bit. This is a very sweet Two of Cups. I, I really like it. Another thing when I was actually looking um, at images of this deck online was I thought it was like, um, I was thinking Carnival, Carnival, the, um, even though they don't have masks, the costumes were uh, striking me as reminiscent of that more than of a time period. And as it turns out, I was not far off the mark that when... Uh, during most of the period, I guess, that this deck was made, the um, artist, Paulina Cassidy, was living in New Orleans. And she says in the, in, I think it's on the, on the little card there that has information about it, uh, about the deck, 
that Mardi Gras was an inspiration for this deck, for the costumes and stuff in this deck. Um, what are your weaknesses or limitations? Eight of Swords. And this is so busy that you can hardly see the swords. Um, I'm going to say that the deck doesn't like to be confined, that the deck doesn't like to um, be stereotyped, even though I'm stereotyping it. I'm calling it, or looking at it as a potential love deck. Um, or it can, it, can, it can mean the opposite. It can mean that this is a deck with limitations. Um, maybe because people have said that the busyness of the cards, like all of the lines in this card, um, prevent them from getting into it, uh, kind of scrambles their brain, which I could see that. Um, so since the swords are in this, are mental energy that obstructs, that could be a limitation of this deck, that it's hard to look past all of the detail to what is most essential about a given card in a given situation. So busy, busy mind, busy cards, busy art, um, maybe is a limitation. But again, she feels, she looks like she's struggling against it, actually more so than uh, some Eight of Swords cards. All right. What is uh, the potential outcome of our time together? Oh, the High Priestess. And this was actually, this card was part of the reason that I decided, ah, oh, sure, I'll get it. <laughs> was because it is a really interesting with all those eyes going on in there and there's a scroll uh, it's just a really mysterious weird actually kind of creepy card and it's like she's got more of an Indian headdress up on top and the trees look like they're covered with Spanish moss um, so this has a very New Orleans-y um, bayou kind of a feel to it actually um, and how the clouds are obscuring the moon so it's very mysterious scroll the pomegranate I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a lotus down there or what it looks like two bees as well as these two figures oh and we've got some snakes also it looks like Although I don't see the heads of the snakes, I see, or maybe it's tentacles. Maybe it's like octopus tentacles there. So, a really weird, but to me it's, it's kind of appealing. I like it. I like that she's actually kind of a shell for what's interior to her. You know? That's, anyway, very interesting. So maybe it's saying it will help me develop my intuition, or maybe it's saying it'll, it'll bring out all of the inner creatures <laughs> that are lurking behind the scroll. Um, but it kind of goes back to this, you know, what are you here to teach people, you know, in terms of imagination. To me, this is maybe, you know, allowing your interior imagination to speak or come to the fore, open you up, something like that. So let's see. Um, what is one thing you ask of me? Nine of Wands. So this is a little bit of a different Nine of Wands. Is that a skull hanging there? Um, in you know this person seems even though there's some bandages on um, 
on, on the torso, actually. They're kind of dancing on top of whatever that is. Again, it looks almost like a drum that's stuck up in the air. Um, and I don't know if this is like water down here or what. So this is almost like dancing on higher ground, but there's no sense of a threat here. Like normally in a Nine of Wands, I feel like, you know, that, that there is an established territory that's being grounded, excuse me, is being guarded. And this is almost like a nest has been built. Even though it's not a hollow nest, it looks like it's got a drum cover on it. Um, and this little figure is just up here dancing away. Maybe it's supposed to be a strange little threatening dance. Um, you know, to, to guard the space. I don't know. Maybe it just means keeping space, holding space for the deck. It's asking you to hold space for the deck. Um, something like that. And what kind of readings do you enjoy the most? Well, I was waiting for the lovers to pop up. <laughs> Four of Pentacles. So, I don't know. A little possum there. A little marsupial. I have a hard time imagining this as a deck about money. Um, you know, it could, you know, pentacles also has to do with what we value. Um, so it could say, hold on to what you value. There's eyeballs, there's eyeballs down there on the base of the thing she's sitting on. Um, I would say readings about what makes a person feel secure. You know, there's earlier it said, you know, within these cards, it was indicating um, was it how it would describe itself. That there was, yeah, the Ten of Cups. You know, that it's a friendly, loving deck. And so I could see how even if it's... Um, you know, with the Two of Cups, if it's a deck that works well for love readings, maybe it's just a deck that, uh, you know, maybe it's a hug deck because this person is hugging the pentacle. Um, a hug deck, a, a deck that tries to be gentle in its messages um, and one that tries to make you maybe feel secure during change. But you know, we just don't, we don't do readings like that, do we? I mean, I guess I don't. I'm a problem solver. Maybe that's why I got that, that maybe that's why I get the Knight of Swords and the Page of Swords, is because I, I go to decks wanting to problem solve, wanting them to give me some perspective so that I can make a decision. So yeah. And so that, that that would be a reason why this deck would be neglected, <laughs> because I don't I don't go to uh, to decks for hugs usually. Now I do sometimes, but usually not tarot. I'll use like um, the Wild Kuan Yin, um, even the Enchanted Map. Um, you know, there's a variety of oracle decks that I'm much more likely to use for um, giving myself a sense of encouragement or, um, you know, security maybe in trying times or something like that. Okay, um, and the next and last one is how will you challenge me in this 
card was clearly itching to come off of the deck. Knight of Wands. Yeah. Very simple, basic. This card almost kept me from getting the deck because it's so creepy. <laughs> to me, this eight-legged bird thing is very creepy. And it was almost like, all right, that's all I need to see. No, I'm not getting that deck. And really, the main reason that I ended up deciding to get it, or even that what looks like a goose that looks like it's got hands on it, um, was because the other deck alternative, so she had a couple of decks, the person who wanted um, the deck I was letting go of it had two decks that she was willing to offer for it, and this is one of them. And because of this card, I almost said, you know what, too weird, no. Um, and I'm glad I didn't. I'm, I'm liking this deck, actually. Uh, and, and when I thought about it, I saw this is one of the cards that is very Edward Lear-ish, this kind of illustration, this kind of weird animal sort of illustration, um, was the Aquarian. And the Aquarian, and it was the Aquarian in, in a tin. And I think that the art of the Aquarian is beautiful, the Aquarian tarot. But it's one of those decks that's so zoomed in that you're not seeing much of the scene or, yeah, what's happening. You're just zoomed in on something. And that just doesn't work for me. And as I was trying to decide between these two decks, it just was like, you know what, I don't think I can do the Aquarian, beautiful though it may be. I really don't think it would work for me, whereas this I thought had half a chance. And I've been curious about it. Um, well, really, both the Aquarian and this deck. You know, if somebody threw an Aquarian tarot in my lap, I wouldn't refuse it. <laughs> but I ended up being more curious about this and more willing to, to take it on board. Uh, but yeah, this was a card that just about kept me from getting the deck. It's a little too weird for me. Other meanings for that, Knight of Wands. Um, I don't know. One of the things I'm going to do with this deck, which I might do when I'm done with this video, because it would be a nice thing to do in the evening, um, would be to get put all of the knights together, all of the kings, all the ones, all the twos, all the threes, and just look at them and see how they compare. But another thing I'll do here is I'm going to look at what she says about her knight of wands and this weird little bird with all of the legs, the big bird. So here's the wands. The knight, right? Yep, the knight of wands. The knight's torch-like wand channels his wild impulse of nature. Um, <clears throat> so maybe it's saying this deck has a wild impulse of nature that, that will be a little difficult for me in my page and knight of swords ways of reading. Um, he chooses his own direction. His friends have little say. So again, I think that may be the temperament of this deck. The bird's many legs provide strength to move ahead, but he could stumble if he rushed. Meanings, energetic, eager to assist, passionate and dramatic. Reversed meanings. Yes, this is a passionate and dramatic deck. Um, so reverse meanings, troublemaker, enjoy strife and argument. No, I don't get that from this deck. So let's look at some of the other cards that came up. Like, how about the Four of Pentacles? And let's just see what she says. Did I get any majors? I don't think I did. Um, Pentacles, Four of Pentacles. A girl sits alone girl sits alone on a cliff. Well, it actually looks like it's made of wood. Anyway, with her treasures, hopeful that the thorns will keep others away from her possessions. The bare branches represent her limitations. 
And so this was the kind of readings that it enjoys the most. Meanings, material gain, love of power, protection of investments, ownership. Ah, see, I'm, I'm shaking again. I'm not able to hold it steady. That was my thumb that was making the shakes. Um, and that can be, uh, that shaking, when I get that way, uh, can be, I'm pretty steady, though. Um, the Lyme disease sometimes and it tells me I need to switch my antibiotics if I get too shaky, but I'm not, I'm not terribly shaky here. Um, I don't feel weak or anything like that, and, I'm, and I don't normally shake. I know some people kind of are normally shaky. So, um, meanings, material, material gain, love of power, protection of investments, ownership, locked change, and isolation. Reversed meanings, greed, jealousy, stinginess, loss of material possessions. Um, so this was one that struck me as a little odd also. So let's look at the Nine of Wands. So we're going back to the Wands. Whoops. Nine of Wands, though injured and fatigued, I don't know, that, that doesn't look fatigued to me, I mean, look at this dancing up there, it says she, um, the heroine remains vigilant, she knows the dark skies will clear up, though yellow signifies warning or fear, oh, that's interesting, because see, to me, yellow is like cheerfulness and brightness, <laughs> Um, though yellow signifies warning or fear, it also uh, brings optimism and energy. That's more what, how I would assign it. Meanings, courage in the face of confrontation, vigilance, order and discipline, preparation for conflict. Um, reversed meanings, fights, confusion, being caught off guard. Yeah, to me that's a pretty feisty... Nine, uh, nine of Wands. So, should we read about the imagery of the High Priestess? So, I was forgetting that I had gotten the High Priestess. That is my one major arcana. So, it says, an octopus. Uh, it is an octopus. It was tentacles. Those are tentacles. Okay, so it says, an octopus embracing the high priestess embodies insight and vision. Um, sprites by her side, and there's those two figures there, sprites by her side are guardians of concealed knowledge. The totem trees patterned with codes reach into higher planes. Okay, it's got some swirlies. I just thought of it kind of as birch birch bark swirlies, but anyway. Um, so she does a lot of describing of her cards. You know, maybe a lot of people who've gotten this deck, this is a beautiful Hierophant card, have, um, have not kind of gone to the guidebook as much as maybe would be helpful with this deck because she kind of points out things that are important to her uh, within this. So ancient all-seeing eyes peer out from a portal in the priestess's cloak. The wasps, I guess these are not bees but wasps, harness female warrior energy. Meaning, secret knowledge, natural instinct, intuition, wisdom, learning, purity, and mystery. Reversed meanings, lack of understanding, repressed feelings, selfishness, dependence on the opinions of others. So the other card I want to look at here, oh, is this one. Eight of Swords. And then I'm getting rambly here, so I'll let it go. Her cups are more traditional anyway. So the Eight of Swords. Oh, is it going to focus? Focus, please. 
close do I have to get? You know? Oh, that's as good as we're going to get right. Oh, there we go. Maybe I just need to sit still. Um, Eight of Swords, bound by brambles, the fairy knows that she must collect the inner strength to free herself from fear, represented by the yellow swords, and jealousy, represented by the green swords. Oh, that's interesting. I never thought of the Eight of Swords having anything to do with je jealousy. Meanings, limitations, entrapment, being overwhelmed, waiting to be rescued, feeling victimized. Reversed meanings, liberation, logic, rebuilding self-confidence. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, so there it is. Messing around, messing around with the Polina Tarot, um, getting to know the Paulina Tarot. I don't think it's going to be a deck that I run to often. Oh, that's the Nine of Swords. But I'm reasonably pleased. Beautiful Queen of Pentacles. I really like her. Does she have a bunny rabbit? Is her bunny rabbit is right there. Um, but to me, it does have some appeal. It does have appeal. So I'm not going to discount it. And again, here's another weirdness. Maybe it's all in the wands. <laughs> you have like a two-headed goose thing. And I like, but I do like the little penguins. That's pretty amusing. So I'll be doing more getting to know you with this deck and see what see what comes of it. All right, everybody. I'll let you go. I hope you have a good rest of the day or night wherever you are. And uh, see you again soon. Bye-bye.